What's up internet, my name is Kyle, back with another video about cameras, tech, and all that good stuff. Today, we are making somewhat of a side companion video to my most popular video of all time, Sony a6000, five things you need to know. Um, kind of a settings video, going over some settings you should set after you purchase your a6000. This video, however, is going to be tips and things to know before you click purchase and order the Sony a6000. Now, before we get started, as you guys know, I love the Sony a6000. It is one of my favorite cameras of all time. I think it definitely has its place in the history books as far as photography goes, but that's a whole nother video. This video is about some things you need to know before you purchase the Sony a6000. So this is the box of one of our Sony a6000s. We actually own two of them. One is mine and one is my girlfriend Meg's. And this is the one that comes with the kit lens. You can definitely buy it without the kit lens. It shows some things on the side here, some accessories like a microphone, a flash, a battery, a tripod, and things like that. Um, nothing really on the other side. The top is a picture of the camera and the bottom is basically nothing. So let's open up this bad boy and it has manuals. It has a bunch of manuals. Uh, this one in particular has one in Spanish, one in English, one in another language. I highly suggest you hold on to the box and the manuals. You never know if you want to look up a setting and maybe there's not a YouTube video about it and the setting will be in your manual. So hold on to these and the box in case you wanna resell your camera or trade it in. Now, obviously it comes with the Sony a6000 camera body itself. Uh, it also comes with a Sony mount cap for your camera body. It's usually a light gray color, but this is a uh, aftermarket one. It's just a replacement one that I got. Now, if you get the camera with the kit lens, this is the kit lens, the 16 to 50 power zoom. It comes with a lens cap. It's real tiny like so. And it also comes with a rear cap. And this is the Sony actual branded rear cap for lenses. As so you can see with the light gray color. Next is pretty basic. It's the Sony branded camera strap. This is, you know, just the normal camera strap, nothing special or anything like that. And you can put it on the side where these uh, metal clips are and they come with little triangle hinges, which I have taken off on my camera. Uh, when I did daily vlogs, I didn't have the strap on and they would make a lot of noise, those little metal triangles. Whoa. So we have no internet or it's in and out. So we have no idea where to go for sunset. And we're gonna be here tomorrow. So we're just driving around apparently Yosemite Valley. And um, this is what's called the swinging bridge. It doesn't swing, but um, um, you could probably put rubber on them so they don't make noises or you can just use the camera strap and they make less noise with the camera strap on. Also what comes in the box is the viewfinder eye cup, I guess you would call it. Um, this is the electronic viewfinder on the a6000 and you can use the eye cup on this for more protection and it's basically like a cushion for your eye. A lot of people with glasses may take this off so they can get their eye closer to the viewfinder, if you will. Um, but you know, I don't wear glasses. So for me, it just makes sense to use the cap and you know, it, it shields sunlight out of the viewfinder. So, you know, it's better for use when you're outdoors and it's real sunny. And the next thing that comes in the box is the battery. This is the Sony FW50 battery. And this is actually a third party battery here. This is a Wasabi branded battery. Um, you don't have to use the Sony branded batteries. It comes with a Sony branded battery. This is just an extra that I have. And we'll talk a little bit more about the batteries in a minute. And then last but not least, which I have lost mine, but again, we'll talk about it in a second, is the actual charger for the Sony a6000. So in my opinion, this is one of the biggest drawbacks of what comes in the box for the Sony a6000. The charger for Sony a6000 in the box is just a wall mounted charger that plugs directly into the camera and you have to leave the battery in the camera to charge it. 
Now, the reason this is a drawback is the charger it comes with, um, I've seen a couple different versions of it. It's usually a very short cord, so you really don't have a lot of room to plug it in and you know your camera might not be in the best position. And then two, you have to not use your camera while it's charging the battery that's inside of it. I think that's a terrible user experience. I wish Sony would include a external battery charger and bringing that up, I will show you the one that I have. So I've talked about this charger before. It is the Power Extra dual charger slot with an LCD screen up top. You can charge two batteries in it and it has a USB cable that you can plug into, you know, a iPhone power brick or any kind of USB power brick and then plug it into a wall or you can just plug it into like my iMac back here. I can plug it in a USB port and it will charge both batteries. The batteries go in it like so, and you can charge both of them. And when it's plugged in, you'll see two separate indicators for how charged your batteries are. This is really cheap. Um, again, I'll have links to it down in the description. You get it from Amazon with both batteries and the charger. It's a lifesaver. Um, I think it's a very inconvenient experience when you first get your A6000 and you learn that you can only charge the battery with that charger while it's in the camera and then you can't use your camera at the same time. So definitely one of the main reasons I wanted to make this video so you didn't you know, get surprised when you got your camera and then you had to charge it and you couldn't play with it while it's charging. You get the point. Now circling back, to the viewfinder eye cup these right here are replacement eye cups for your viewfinder i am just going to tell you right now you're going to lose one of these or the one that came with your camera you're going to lose it eventually whether it you know gets lost when you throw your camera in the car or in a backpack or you know just out and about it's gonna fall off it's not super easy to fall off but if you're like me who doesn't baby their gear or baby their equipment I kind of, you know, throw it around a little bit. I climb stuff with my camera on and all that. It's going to fall off and these are really cheap. You can get them on Amazon and you may have guessed it. Links in the description for these little replacement guys. Now real quick, I'll show you how to get a lens on the Sony a6000. So if you look here on the kit lens, you can see this little indentation on the lens cap and then you can see the white dot right here. Um, these are very important indicators. The uh, tab mark on the lens cap is where it lines up with the white dot there. When you turn it this way, it's shut. When you turn it to be you know, equal with the white dot, you can take it off. And then you may be like, well, what's the white dot mean on the lens? And that is for the white dot on the lens mount. Now, another tip is when you're changing lenses or you're even cleaning your camera out with say like a dust blower, um, you wanna point the camera down so things are falling out of the sensor area and not into it like this. You don't wanna hold it like this. You wanna hold it down protect the sensor at all costs. So it takes a little bit getting used to, especially if you've never put lenses on a camera before, but you just look for the white dots and you line them up. So I am going to show you right here as best as I can here. So you got the white dot there on the lens mount. Here's the white dot on the lens. You're going to turn it until they match up right there and then turn and boom, once you hear that click, it's in. That button right there that's next to the lens is the release lever. So when you press that down, you just press it with your pointer finger right there and turn the lens, you can take it off. Um, and it locks in when you turn it enough. So you don't have to press that button to lock it in, but you press and hold it down and turn the lens to take it off. It takes a little practice to get good at this, but in no time, you'll be perfect at it. You kind of situate the lens on there and then rotate it, hear it click, and you're good to go. And if you need a visual indicator, it's the white dot on both of them. If you're new to photography and you're thinking about getting the A6000, I highly suggest getting it with the kit lens. You save money rather than buying them separately. Typically, separately, the kit lens is 150 bucks. With the camera and the combo kit, like the box that I have, it's 
only $50. So right now during the holiday season, the A6000 with the kit lens is about 450 bucks, 400 for the camera, 50 for the lens. But like I said, if you do them separately, it'll be more expensive. And then on top of that, if you want more range than the 16 to 50, there's a 55 to 210. And they also typically, you know, Best Buy or Amazon, they sell that in a combo kit as well. And you can save even more money and start off with two lenses. So that's just some food for thought. Okay, so what is missing from the box besides an external battery charger and extra eye cups? There is also the problem of needing an SD card. I don't know why, even you know, after buying multiple cameras in my life and everything like that, you can never have enough SD cards, but if you're a beginner, I feel like this will be something that could be forgotten about is when you get the A6000, it doesn't come with any type of memory card to actually save your photos. So be sure to get an SD card. Um, they're really cheap nowadays. You can even use a micro SD with an adapter and plug that sucker in, it doesn't matter. If you're wondering, I will put some SD card recommendations down in the description. I personally use SanDisk. I've never had a card fail on me, knock on wood. But yeah, uh, I really like SanDisk. And like I said, I'll put some recommendations down in the description. Okay, so now I wanted to go over some of the core kind of features with the A6000. I feel like some people make comments on my channel and my other videos and say, well, why doesn't the camera have this? And why doesn't it have that? I mean, there's usually one big reason why a feature is not on the A6000 compared to some newer cameras. And that's just because it was released in 2014. So this is a five-year-old camera, but it is so, so relevant today because it is such a little beast. But there are some things that are missing that I think you should know before you click buy. So number one is like a two-parter. Um, it's the video specs and it doesn't shoot 4K or 120 frames per second for slow motion. Now, I don't know who got the idea that 4K and 120 FPS was like popular four years ago, five years ago now, but it wasn't. It was not included in the spec sheet of the Sony a6000. Hate to break it to you. However, the Sony a6000 shoots beautiful 1080p, which I'm recording in right now. It actually has a high bit rate for such a cheap camera. It's 50 megabits per second. If you don't know what that is, just know it is great quality 1080p video. Now, another thing that you should know about video before you buy this camera is that it's not really a long form video type of device. Now there's two parts to this. One is that a lot of streamers love the A6000 or even the cheaper A5100. Now the reason for that is that the autofocus is pretty stellar on the A6000. A lot of people like how it transitions, it's very fast, it's, it's great for video in that aspect. Streamers are using this camera as like a pass-through device. It's not actually recording the video. That's being done by your computer or other software or a capture card. Whereas a video like this, there are some problems with long form video. The first problem is that the camera overheats after like say 15 minutes of recording, just it gets really hot in there between the battery and its internals and everything like that. And the camera will shut off on its own. Now the second thing is that say you have cool air, like air conditioning directly behind it and you've beaten the overheating problem. The second thing is that it has a 30 minute recording limit. A ton of cameras have that 30 minute recording limit. Um, there's a whole story behind that that we'll get into another time. However, newer cameras like say the Sony a6400, which came out this year, doesn't have a recording limit. And also Sony has figured out the overheating problem finally after five years. And that makes that camera a lot better for long form video than say the A6000. Now there's a bunch of things you can do to combat the overheating. You can open your battery door. The camera can stay on when the battery door is open. Um, you can, you know, turn off some features. Uh, you can do a bunch of other things, you know, have the LCD off the back of the camera. Um, but you know, generally speaking, it does have an overheating problem. And for me, I record, you know, for an hour, maybe two hours at a time for these videos. However, I split up the clips. I stop recording. I give it maybe a minute, probably less. And then I start recording again. 
and the camera acts perfectly fine. For long form video, like say an interview or a concert or a podcast where you wanna do a video element, this is probably not the camera for you. Um, even if you use what's called a dummy battery and you know take the battery heat out of the equation, it will still overheat or you can't record over 30 minutes. That's like a hard stop in the camera settings. You can hack it, but you know this is more geared towards beginners and just want you to know that this is probably not the camera for your hour long plus video projects. Okay, another big thing that you should know about the Sony a6000, and you can probably tell this from pictures of the product, is that it doesn't have a fully articulating screen so you can see yourself when you're taking photos or if you're vlogging or trying to do YouTube stuff. And what I mean by that is this screen right here on the Canon M50, it flips out, it flips around. This is it, what you would call a fully articulating LCD screen on a camera and the A6000 only has a screen that can flip down. So if you're shooting like low to the ground, you can still see stuff, you know, from looking down or if you're at a concert or something, you can see stuff at this angle, but it doesn't flip around the side at all so you can see yourself. Now, some people don't like that at all, especially for vloggers if they wanna know that they're in frame or in focus, but um, some tips on that is you can use face detection on this and shoot at a wide focal length, and really, you're always going to be in focus, but I definitely get wanting to see yourself Right now, I have an external monitor hooked up to my A6000 to solve that problem, but this is like a sit down studio kind of setup. I can definitely understand somebody wanting a flippy screen for you know general use, but the A6000 does not have that. Okay, another thing you should know before buying the A6000 is about microphones. So this is a microphone I used way back in the day with my old Canon and it uses a microphone jack right here. The A6000 does not have that. It doesn't have it on the side here. It just has, you know, uh, mini HDMI and micro USB, and there's nothing on the other side. So you can't hook up a microphone like this, like a, a shotgun mic with a microphone jack, However, if you have one with the hot shoe, an actual hot shoe that is an interface, you can put it on the Sony A6000's hot shoe right here. So that is another way a microphone can connect to it. Um, like I said, this one, there is actually no connection here for the microphone. It can sit here, but then it's supposed to plug in somewhere. The Canon M50, it can do that. However, the Sony A6000, has to rely on microphones that either have an electronic hot shoe connection or you have to use an external microphone, which I'm using right now, and then you sync it in post-production. Sounds like a lot of effort, it's really not, um, and plus external microphones are better for audio anyway, but in the vlogging world, um, having a microphone on top of your camera and just you know facing you really helps and the A6000 does not have that. Now with that said, uh, Sony has a microphone port in all of their higher level cameras, like the 6300, 64, 65, 6600. It's just missing on the Sony A6000 and I think that was intentional back when this camera came out. I will list down in the description some of Sony's branded microphones that utilize the hot shoe. Um, I'm not sure about how good they are or anything like that. I will have to review one sometime soon for this channel to let you guys know, but I will put some links down to some microphones that just work straight with the Sony A6000 down below. Also, back when I was doing daily vlogging every day in 2016, I used the in-camera microphone. So there is a microphone that's in the camera. It's actually near the top, and it's not that bad if you're close to your camera. Meg's yelling at me to get out of her pictures right now. That is half dome. If you wanna do a YouTube video and you're like way back here, you're going to get a very echoey sound. It's gonna sound like you're in a tin can a little bit. You're like way back here, you're going to get a very echoey sound. It's gonna sound like you're in a tin can a little bit. But that is, you know, most cameras in camera audio is not that great. It's just that it's missing that microphone jack 
so you have to use other alternatives. And one more thing to really know before you purchase the A6000 and really any other interchangeable lens cameras is that lenses are expensive. I've been in a lot of discussion with you guys through comments, Instagram DMs, emails, you name it, talking about lenses, what lenses you should buy, are there budget lenses, why are lenses so expensive? And the whole reason behind that is that lenses are more valuable in the long run or they hold their value over a longer period of time than a camera body. Camera body like the Sony a6000 is kind of beating the odds at this point being so relevant for so long, but normally a camera body, you know, may kind of age out after three years. There are internals in the camera bodies that get better over, you know, short periods of time, whereas lenses kind of have more staying power and also they alter your image quality a lot more than the camera bodies themselves. The Sony a6000 can use crazy, crazy expensive lenses on it and get amazing results, but it's not the camera body that's necessarily doing that. Uh, those lenses can also be used on more expensive bodies and so forth, and it's really worth it to invest in lenses um, despite your camera body. If you want the best quality images, typically you're gonna wanna use the best lenses on whatever body you can. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to spend a huge sum of money for the camera body. It's better to invest in the lenses versus the body. But yeah, that's, that's just a general kind of rule of thumb or some knowledge for you. Um, the A6000 is an absolute beast in photography. Uh, it's aging a little bit with video stuff. Like we said earlier, it doesn't have 4K. Uh, it doesn't have super slow motion, but photography and everything, I think it is still a game changer for the cost that you're buying it at. Okay, I think that covers everything I wanted to say. Um, I hope this was really helpful for you if you are thinking about purchasing the A6000 or maybe even thinking about just getting into photography in general. I hope it was helpful for you. You know, what's in the box? What are some things you might need? And kind of just going overall about the specs and then of course, you know, what I just said about lenses. I hope that's all very helpful. I think it would have helped me when I was first buying a camera, you know, a couple of years back. Okay, and that about wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful and maybe it helped just one person out there before they hit the purchase button on the great Sony a6000, but yeah, hope it was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next episode. Later.